Thank you very much. We'll turn now to our next item of business, which is topical questions. First question is from Murdo Fraser. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what its position is on ScotRail's performance. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. Uh, ScotRail's performance is clearly not where it should be, and I've raised this matter regularly and more recently with Alec Hines, MD of the ScotRail Alliance. The current level of cancellations caused by the rest day working dispute is unacceptable, and I call on both RMT and ScotRail to resolve this dispute without further delay. The impact of ScotRail's continued training of staff to deliver the up-and-coming timetable changes is equally unacceptable. These planned changes will deliver the first phase of this government's programme to significantly improve services across much of the Scottish rail network through a record investment in infrastructure and rolling stock. It is, however, very disappointing that passengers are bearing the brunt of this late delivery of new trains and the knock-on impact on training schedules, exacerbated by the industrial dispute. I'll be making this very point when I meet with Mr Haynes later today. Roger Fraser. Can I thank the, the Cabinet Secretary for his response? I, I'm sure I'm not the only MSP in this chamber to be contacted by angry constituents following the disruption that we saw at the weekend that the Cabinet Secretary uh, referred to, when we saw a large number of cancellations and passengers being uh, left uh, stranded. Uh, the RNT union have claimed that, this, that their overtime ban has aggravated that situation, but whatever the reason for it, it shouldn't be uh, that the, the uh, travelling public who are left as victims of the current situation. We keep being reassured in the Chamber that things are going to get better. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell us when? Cabinet Secretary. Well, Senior Officer, um, look, I fully recognise the concerns that his constituents have, as I, my own constituents have had in regard to the challenges which they've had, with the, particularly over the course of the last few days, uh, as a combination of the training uh, programme for the new 385s come, or 385s coming in and also the industrial dispute which is ongoing. The member will be aware that there's been significant investment made in providing new rolling stock and new electric trains, which will enhance the services across many parts of the Scottish network. The new timetable comes into force as of the 9th of December. With the new rolling stock provided by Hitachi, that will allow that then to the remaining rolling stock to then be cascaded out to other parts of the network, including into the Fife uh, area as uh, well. Alongside that, there will be further improvements to the timetabling made in May of next year, and the full programme will be completed by December of next year. That will uh, enhance the number of seats available, the rolling stock which is available, uh, and also improve the timetabling of services across the country. So I recognise, uh, uh, I recognise the frustration that passengers have uh, in relation to the difficulties which we've had in recent days in particular. However, what I can say to the member is that the considerable investment which we're making into both rolling stock and infrastructure will deliver improvements as we go forward with the timetable changes which start at the end of this week. Murder Fraser. I kind of thank the Cabinet Secretary for his, his, his further response. Uh, he'll, he'll be aware that uh, uh, rail fares are due to rise by an average of 2.8% from the new year. And on, on top of that, to add insult to injury, it is currently being proposed by ScotRail Rail that they will scrap uh, free uh, travel for children uh, as from uh, January. Uh, I'm sure that, that passengers wouldn't mind so much paying higher fares if they were getting an excellent service, but they're simply not. not. So when he meets uh, ScotRail, indeed when he meets the RMT, will he put a rocket under them both and tell them to improve their performance? Secretary. Officer, officer um, uh, ScotRail Alliance are in no doubt about my views about the performance to date. And when I meet with the MD of the ScotRail Alliance this afternoon, he'll be in no doubt about my views about performance in the last couple of days in particular. And that's why I would call upon RMT and ScotRail to uh, get round the negotiating table and get this matter settled sooner rather than later and to make sure that we put passengers first in these issues. Can I say to the member, though, uh, it should also be recognised that the uh, increase in fares, which, uh, again, I don't know is, is unwelcomed, um, is the lowest increase for the whole of the UK uh, because of the capping arrangements which we have here in Scotland. Uh, almost two-thirds um, of the railway uh, network in Scotland and the cost of the railway network in Scotland is met by the Scottish Government. Uh, that's more than any other part of the UK. Uh, so Scottish Government provide a considerable level of resource to try and help to minimise the increase in fares, although I do recognise that any increase is unwelcome. But the member and other members can be absolutely assured uh, that ScotRail uh, Alliance are in no doubt about my views and their performance to date. I'll be making that point again to them this afternoon. Now, just for information to the Minister and to members, there are nine members 
have asked to request supplementaries today, which I think uh, the will, Minister will bear in mind. If we can make, there is actually some time in hand this afternoon, so, but if uh, members can ask their questions briefly and the Minister can equally be succinct, we'll get through as many as possible. Bruce Crawford to be followed by Colin Smith. Bruce Thank you, President Officer. Uh, do you understand, Cabinet Secretary, my constituents' concerns over the service they are currently receiving on the rail network? Cancellations, overcrowded trains, inconvenient timetable um, alterations and lack of information at stations on late changes. And going about their daily business, they just want the, this situation to be sorted out, Cabinet Secretary, and they want to know when it will be sorted out. What more can the Scottish Government do to put pressure on the rail network operators to improve matters at the earliest possible date. Cabinet Secretary. Officer, there's a number of factors that Mr Crawford has uh, raised and the member will be aware that electrification of the line into his constituency has just been completed with the testing of that line having been completed last week uh, for the introduction of the new uh, 385 service which will help to improve both the cap capacity and also the reliability of the service for his constituents. In relation to the issues he has uh, regarding uh, communications, uh, these are issues which have been raised with uh, ScotRail and continue to be raised by my officials in Transport Scotland with ScotRail to improve the way in which they communicate uh, with the public. Uh, and what I can assure the member is that we continue to make sure that ScotRail and their partners are doing everything possible to improve the, the, the services which they offer to, uh, uh, to the travelling public. And he can be assured that I'll continue to press that uh, upon them uh, when I meet with them later on this afternoon. Colin Smith to be followed by Christine Graham. Thank you, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware that ScotRail have announced plans to scrap the popular Kids Go Free scheme that sees up to two children travel free with an adult in Scotland's railways. Does the Cabinet Secretary recognise the short-sighted move will make our public transport less accessible, risk pricing families off our trains, and will they condemn the move by ScotRail brosses and join me in signing Labour's petition calling on ScotRail to think again? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, officer, I'll give it a, a miss when it comes to signing the petition, but what I can say to the member is I do understand the concerns that uh, members of the public have and the members expressed around the Kids Go Free promotion uh, being removed. That's a, a commercial product which is in the hands of ScotRail to choose to implement or not to do. They've chosen to change that. Uh, what they have stated is that the number of tickets where uh, children travelling for £1 uh, under the new scheme will be greater than what's available under the uh, Kids Go Free promotion. Uh, but as I mentioned to my, my response to uh, uh, Muddle Fraser, we do a considerable amount to cap price increases in Scotland, which is why the increase in Scotland is at the lowest of any part of the UK because of the considerable investment which the Scottish Government put into its, uh, uh, to ScotRail. Christine Graham to be followed by Mark Bruskell. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I add to the ScotRail list and advise the Cabinet Secretary I have written to Alec Hines because of the increasing complaints from constituents about overcrowding on the Borders Railway, that's both in the Borders and Midlothian, mostly at rush hour, but also when there's rugby on at Murrayfield, which you should have thought would have been anticipated. Even this afternoon as I came into the Chamber, a constituent tells me the 11.30 from Tweed Bank was cancelled due to lack of crew. Meeting uh, Alec Hines this afternoon, will he draw this to his attention? and ask him when will there be enough carriages on the Borders Railway and I will follow through on that cancellation. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, more than happy to raise that point with uh, Hallett Hines when I meet with him this afternoon and also to uh, just emphasise the point is the new rolling stock uh, which has come in, new Hitachi uh, 385s will increase capacity on the Borders Railway, the, the, the rail, uh, rail line which will allow uh, for more seats being available particularly at peak times. Mark Ruskell to be followed by Richard Lyle. Thank you. Last night I hosted a meeting in Dumbleyan Bridge of Allen where hundreds of constituents were raging at the inconvenience that the timetable changes will cause them. Meanwhile, my constituents in Fife will see no improvements to the evening services that were promised. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell me why there's not been any consultation with communities about the new timetable, when the promised new rolling stock will be delivered on the Dumbleyan Alloa lines, and why communities in Fife are once again being left behind? Cabinet Secretary. Absolutely not. So the timetabling matter which has um, been taken forward by Network Rail has been one which has been in process for the last two years uh, with a, a range of engagement across uh, different parties and stakeholders uh, in taking that forward. Uh, I've made reference to the fact that the 385s which are coming into service are already in service but with the additional ones which are coming into service on a daily basis and the electrification of the line to Dunblane will allow them to operate in that particular line and to increase capacity to uh, Dunblane and that will start to uh, come into play as of the timetable change which takes place on the 9th of December. Richard. Yes, Richard Lyle to be followed by Alexander Stewart. 
Thank you, President Officer. Can I welcome the Cabinet Secretary's comments, but can the Cabinet Secretary set out what percentage of recent delays were the responsibility of network rail, and would he join me in calling on all parties in this chamber to campaign for network rail to be devolved to this Parliament? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, there is absolutely no doubt that infrastructure has had a significant impact on the performance um, of ScotRail. For example, if uh, uh, members just look at the previous four weeks, which takes us in the period it's recorded up to the 10th of November, 59.5% uh, of delays were related to network rail um, on the ScotRail network, which is unacceptably high. Um, and, that's, uh, and I do welcome the fact that the ORR last week decided to take action against uh, network rail because of their poor performance. Uh, and the impact it's having on passenger services. There's no doubt in my mind uh, that in order to address these issues more effectively, we need to align both the rolling stock providers and the infrastructure providers more effectively. And the best way in which that can be achieved here in Scotland is to devolve network rail to be a responsibility and answerable to this Parliament. Alexander Stewart, to be followed by Joan McAlpine. Thank you, Presiding Officer. New timetable changes will put my constituents at Dunblane to Edinburgh and Dunblane to Glasgow at a real disadvantage uh, with the loss of peak time trains, uh, Cabinet Secretary. Uh, how can this be justified for hard-working commuters who will eventually pay more to get less? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, the member will be aware that in order to make sure that we can deliver on the enhancements which are going to be delivered by the timetable right across the country, there are changes being made in areas such as Dunblane, a key part of which is also to improve uh, the infrastructure there, which is why it's been electrified up to Dunblane, uh, which is a significant investment which will allow the new Attache 385s uh, to operate in that line, which will increase capacity and it will also provide greater resilience on that particular line as well. Joan McAlpine to be followed by Claire Baker. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will know that many commuters in my constituency rely on the Trans Pennine service from Lockerbie to the Central Bell. But according to the latest performance data, two out of every three Trans Pennine trains on their Scotland route were either late or cancelled, and those which do run are overcrowded. Um, even short delays are catastrophic as many commuters need to make a ScotRail connection at Carstairs, which will not wait for delayed Trans Pennine trains. But I know this is a service regulated by the Department of Transport in London. Is there anything the Cabinet Secretary can, to, can do to persuade Chris Grayling to take action and put a rocket under Trans Pennine? Secretary. Uh, Officer, I am aware of concerns around uh, the performance of the Trans Pennine service. Its PPM uh, is at 71.65% uh, uh, for the latest period to uh, 14th October, 10th of uh, November of uh, this year, uh, which is a, a marked deterioration uh, over the course of the last uh, year. Uh, the concerns which the member has raised are a matter for the uh, uh, Secretary for Transport, uh, the Department of Transport in London, uh, and uh, I will no doubt uh, pass on the concerns which the member has raised, but I know that I have had constituents of my own who have raised concerns about the reliability of this service and its poor punctuality. Claire Baker to be followed by Jenny Gilruth. Uh, President officer, the service in Fife in recent weeks has been terrible, with crew shortages being given as the reason. My constituents are losing confidence in Abellio ScotRail to deliver the service that Fife deserves, a service they are about to pay more for. Does the Cabinet Secretary recognise that just a few weeks ago we had a debate in this chamber where the government and the backbenchers and the SNP told us that the service was fine? And does the Cabinet Secretary now agree with me that this per poor performance cannot continue and that the contract should be broken with the Belial Scott Rail as soon as possible? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, uh, President Officer, um, I've already accepted that the uh, level of service that's being provided at the present moment is not acceptable. Uh, and ScotRail and Network Rail need to take action in order to address these issues. There are a range of measures which were set out in the Doravan Review, which will help to improve uh, resilience within the Fife area as well, alongside the new rolling stock which is coming in, which will allow a cascade of other rolling stock out to the Fife line. So, for example, where they at the present time have four carriages on at peak times, it will move up to six carriages. They will increase capacity off peak times as well. Uh, ScotRail Alliance have also given an undertaking to review the existing timetable to look at how they can improve it further uh, going forward. But I've got no doubt that the level of performance that passengers are experiencing on the Fife line is not to the acceptable standard, and that's why action needs to be taken in order to address these issues. Jenny Gilruth to be followed by Neil Findlay. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, can the Cabinet Secretary request an update on the 4.34pm ScotRail Edinburgh to Perth service, which calls at Mark Inch and which was reported in September as being Scotland's most overcrowded train with just two carriages and running at 136% of planned capacity when he meets with ScotRail this afternoon? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I'll uh, ask uh, for ScotRail to provide the member with that, the, that information. And Neil Findlay. 
Um, last week we saw a train arrive at Uphall train station, then leave with half of the carriages and half the passengers left at the station as the rest of the train sped off to Helensborough. Cabinet Secretary, this is rapidly becoming carry-on ScotRail, just without any of the laughs. We've got delays, we've got cancellations, rising fares, now children being charged and trains separating at stations. When is this shambles going to end? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, I'm sure the member recognises that those who work in the ScotRail uh, and Network Rail uh, uh, organisations uh, work very hard to try and provide the best service possible. Uh, and I fully recognise that. The incident which the member made reference to has been investigated by the ORR because there are technical failings within the train as to how that's come about because there are fail-safe systems within it that should have prevented that from occurring. And what we now have to do is to await the outcome of the ORR's investigation into the matter. Can I thank the members and the minister for getting through so many questions? 11 MSPs there. Uh, question number two now, Rhoda Grant. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking in response to Cairngorm Mountain Limited entering administration. Cabinet Secretary Fergus Ewing. The Scottish Government, under my direction as Rural Economy Secretary, is doing everything possible to ensure that Cairngorm remains open for business. Uh, Highlands Alliance Enterprise are the lead agency and they're working with administrators to achieve the optimal way ahead. We have lodged funds with the administrators to ensure that staff continue to be paid throughout the administration process. Rhoda Grant. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response and also welcome the fact that the staff will continue to be paid because they are still concerned about their future employment prospects as well. The community have raised concerns about the running of the ski resort by Cairngorm Mountain Limited for in the past and they are keen to look at a community buyout for the asset. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, have he spoken to administrators about working with the community in a bid for them to take over the asset and if he has offered the community help in to pull this together? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, there, there is, of course, um, a, a funicular response group, as the member, I believe, knows, which was set up by HIE to improve communication and awareness between the parties. It has uh, representatives from the community. It's chaired by the Highland Council convener, and members include the Aviemore and Glenmore Community Trust, the Aviemore Business Association and Cairngorm Mountain Trust, the Cairngorm Business Partnership uh, and HIE and, and others. And the objective, of course, that we all share is to ensure the continuance of skiing operations at Cairngorm because this is central to the success of the economy in Aviemore, Badenoch and Stress Bay. So we're working with the community to ensure the outcome that everybody wants. Uh, and I can say that HIE and individual officers with whom I work very closely and have done over uh, a long period are working extremely hard to ensure that these objectives are successful. Rhoda Grant. Um, can I urge the Cabinet Secretary to look at community ownership of this asset, which I, he agrees is of a benefit to the whole of Badenoch and Strathspey. Can I also ask, do Cairngorm Mountain owe Highlands and Islands Enterprise money, either by way of financial assistance or by depreciation of the asset while it was under their management? And if so, what steps are being taken to recoup that money? Cabinet Secretary. Well, HIE will always seek to... Uh, its secure implementation of obligations owing to them and liabilities uh, due to them. So I'm happy to provide the member with an assurance that uh, we will, of course, continue to work with community representatives. That's been going very well. I'm very pleased that, that uh, HIE has uh, made a signal investment uh, of uh, a million pounds in snowmaking uh, technology and other apparatus uh, with the aim of ensuring that visitors can continue to enjoy Cairngorm this winter and that Scotland remains the, the attractive snow sports destination that it is. And just for the, the Minister's attention, or the Cabinet Secretary's attention, there are three members who wish to ask supplementaries. We've gone a bit over, but we'll see if we can get through them all. Edward Mountain to be followed by John Finney. Edward Mountain. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I'd like to th thank the Cabinet Secretary for the prompt action he's taken to this very important uh, feature in Strathspey. Can I just ask, Cabinet Secretary, when you're looking forward to work out how to resolve the problems, five possible asks in there. One, there should be an appropriate break clause in the new contract if the company fails to perform that there wasn't in the old contract with Cairngorm Mountain. 
there should be a requirement for all relevant parties to maintain vehicle access to the mountain, a review of all the ski lifts which is desperately needed, a review of pedestrian access to the right, sorry, pedestrian access rights to the plateau for non-skiers. And finally, building on the fact that the local community is so important, that the local community form part of the board and have an active say in how the mountain will be managed. Cabinet Secretary. Well, I'm, I'm great, grateful for Mr Mountain's support and the, the cross-party approach which is being adopted to this issue. I think that's in line with the approach that's being taken locally with the funicular response group. Uh, and certainly I'm happy to give an undertaking that all the points that are raised will be looked at. I can say that there has already been instructed and announced a review of the uplift requirements. That's in the public domain. And I welcome uh, uh, the, the, the findings, but also a debate about the findings, um, because there's a tremendous amount of knowledge within um, Bainer Bay and expertise, and a number of Olympians, uh, some of whom uh, are making a contribution to this debate. The issue of access to the plateau is one that's been debated for a long time as well. Community involvement is something which, of course, we're very keen on. Uh, and uh, I think working together, I'm very hopeful that we can find a solution. The administration will continue, not for very much longer, it is kind of time limited, and I can assure all members that both myself, but particularly the officials at HIE, are working around the clock on this issue because we're aware of the tremendous importance it has to Badenoch and Stress Bay and the local economy. John Finney to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Okay, thank you, President Officer. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, significant sums of money have gone into this location over the years, and it's a shambles. Um, now, Cabinet Secretary will be aware that Audit Scotland have a role to consider public bodies, whether they've exercised due diligence and ensured that public monies have been properly expended. Will the Cabinet Secretary call on Audit Scotland to do that in respect of High's role in Cairngorm, please? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, no, I won't do that. It's for Audit Scotland to make its decisions quite properly. They're entirely independent of government, and I don't really think that course of action is something that is relevant. I'm disappointed that the, the cross-party approach, which seems to have been taken, does not apparently extend to the Greens. Um, they're, well, I, they, to call things a shambles, I think is really un unfortunate. I think what, uh, what uh, local residents wish, what the supporters of snow sports wish, and my goodness, there's a huge number in Badenoch and Stress Bay and around Scotland, is that we find the right practical solution. I haven't met anyone, and I live in the area, who doesn't welcome the million pound investment in snowmaking equipment. As we saw at the weekend uh, in Lecht, snowmaking equipment allowed skiing to take place where there was no natural snow. I think that's a terrific thing. It's a, it's a game-changing technology. I think we should all unite around this and work together in a difficult, complex legal situation to find the best way through, which allows skiing and snow sports to continue uh, this winter as much as we can with the difficulties with the funicular. And frankly, convener, is it, a bit, is it actually that surprising that given the climatic conditions in which the funicular operates and its age, that there are not some issues there? Uh, uh, and therefore, we are working very hard with the practicalities to overcome them. And I'm happy to keep the main parties that support us informed about the progress we make. And finally, Stuart Stevenson. Is the Cabinet Secretary aware that uh, the success of winter sports in the Cairngorms and elsewhere in Scotland depends on people travelling quite significant distances and they will only do so if there's a certainty of snow? I find there's some irony in making a plea for additional snow on the Cairngorm and elsewhere. Uh, will the uh, Cabinet Secretary make sure that the prospective customers are aware that there will always be snow from this government. Yeah, yeah. Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, I, 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 I'm afraid that you know, I can do lots of things, but you know, I have to leave it to Lord Almighty to, uh, to provide us with, with uh, adequate supplies of snow. But seriously, the, 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 the snowmaking equipment is game changing and it has the potential to do what hitherto has been impossible, to provide certainty for individuals and families that wish to participate in the excellent opportunities for skiing and snow sports in Scotland. It is game changing, it is tried and tested, it's been taken up on the left, I believe it's been taken up or tried elsewhere, such as Glencoe. I've been working for the last uh, seven or eight years with all of the outdoor ski resorts 
uh, and escape in Glasgow, which is, of course, a valuable feeder. And the snowmaking equipment, as Mr. Stewart rightly has said, uh, has the potential uh, to move our snow sports and our, the success of our resorts to a new dimension. And we will certainly avail ourselves of uh, that tremendous opportunity.